Steve Dangle Podcast. Powered by Sports Interaction. Canada's Sportsbook. S-D-P-P. The Steve Dangle Podcast. With your hosts, Steve Dangle, Adam Wilde, and Jesse Blake. Let's go! It's us. And you know, I feel like we're doing catch-up week. Yeah. You know, it's like we're, there's a lot of stuff that did kind of fly under the radar Heinz. that we didn't get to. Heinz ketchup. Week. I was about to say, when's mustard week? Ah, ah, let's go. Hey, Mayo. Wow. Mid season form. <laughs> uh, relish. Yeah. Other ones. Keep going. Keep Pickles. going. Pickles. No, that's, no. that's not a condiment. It's not a spreadable condiment. Has to be uh, spreadable yeah, condiment. Yeah, no, that's true. That's yeah. true. You do a little hot sauce on this. Way to fuck up the bit, Jesse. Yeah. Anyway. Damn. Hey. All right. Question for you guys. Let's do the rest of the show, I guess. Before we dive right in. Actually, no. Why what? don't we? Why don't we dive right in with Tim Stutzel? Oh, yes, yeah, see, because he's uh, a diver. diver. See, you, you worked it out out loud. Tim Stutzel <laughs> has signed an eight-year extension a season before he needs to. Uh, it kicks in the twenty-three twenty-four season. He'll be paid eight point three five million do- dives dollars for y- per year uh, until forever. And it's an interesting bet by the Senators. I here's here's what needs to happen. Mm. All the best German players in the world need to get together and all fire their agent. Uh, <laughs> yeah, man, what's with lit German players getting ripped off? Well, because, <laughs> uh, when Leon Dreisaitl originally signed his deal, and you know, you could go back in time and find some ice cold glacial takes. Yes, about that. I hated that deal. I thought I thought it was way too much. And at the time, it was. He hadn't shown that he could be that type of player. Right. And he has, he's now on one of the best contracts in the league. He's consistently in the heart conversation, and he's not even close to being among the highest paid players in the league. It's fantastic. That Stutzel deal, I know there's some skepticism. That's going to be one of the best contracts well, in the league. I wonder, because your buddy Grav, uh, who's who's actually such a great follow, you should follow Grav. I do love Grav. Uh, he said, Tim Stutzel now makes more than Jack Hughes. Stutzler's 2022, 79 games, 22 goals, 58 points. Jack Hughes is 2022, 49 games, 26 goals, 56 points. Stutzler got eight years, 8.35. Hughes got eight years, 8 million. I I think all that means is Jack Hughes's contract is maybe Ma- even better. Maybe Jack Hughes should fire his agent. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> like those, those are two really young, up and coming superstars. Mm-hmm. Not just good players, superstars. In the making, uh, and the Devils are extremely lucky, and the Sens are extremely lucky. And I mean, are the Sens lucky, or is Pierre Dorian Pierre Dorian unleashed? Is unbelievable, unbelievable the off season he's had, and it's still going. Yes, yeah, it's still going. But but, but and I hate to be this guy. Uh, you know, Stutzler's great. To bring Cats, great. All the additions they've made have been fantastic. They need to and when games. we do our well, when we do our when we do our preseason show uh-huh. where we we cover every team, the thing that everybody seems to not want to talk about, especially Senators fans, is what happens after uh, the forwards are you know behind the play. Because honestly, mm. their defense and their goaltending is there's a big old question mark. I like Forsberg in net. Yeah, Anton Forsberg is going to be really good. Okay, and what about the other thirty five games? Yeah, the uh, well, Cam Talby. Oh, I forgot yeah. about that. I He's forgot about why, that. He, he, that's a competent backup. Yeah. Why? Okay, that's a competent. It's he uh, arguably had worse numbers than Matt Murray last year. I uh, Cam <laughs> Talbot. No. What are you talking I, I'm pretty about? sure. I think you're thinking of the wrong guy. Am I? Yeah. yeah. No way. No, no way. Cam Talbot. Yeah. Yeah. No. Do you saw? Okay. 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 What do you Fair have? enough. I'm wrong. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> you, 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 there must be someone else you're thinking. I must yeah, be. I can't think of who I'm thinking of now. Uh, it's okay. Mike that Smith? Old, other old no, goalie? it couldn't have been Mike Smith. <laughs> I don't know, but Mike Smith had no. a good year. Yeah. I, don't, I don't have any problems with be. Ottawa's goaltending. No. Okay. Their defense is... Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm. Listen. But, like, even the Brandstrom deal is one that could end up being pretty 900 good. 900 grand. Yeah, for a guy who, listen, hasn't found it. DJ but if he Smith, does... They've said that the, the rumor's been full around that DJ Smith just doesn't like him. Doesn't yeah. like the way he plays. <laughs> But yeah, he's, no, like his play style, not like him, the human being. Right, right. But he's right. he's making. It's like it'd be like if. Do you think that Sheldon Keith likes Rasmus Sandin? I do. You do as a person, as a person, sure. Yeah. Do you think that he likes the way he plays? 
I the do. way the Leafs have yeah. handled Rasmus Sandin, I think you're absolutely wrong on that. I just I don't think that Sheldon Keefe likes the way Rasmus is he better Sandin than Riley? Plays. No, is he better than Muzzin? No. Is well, be- I would argue that he might be eventually, very soon, if Muzzin keeps getting injured. There's listen. We don't need to make this about the Leafs. No. I know what you're saying. <laughs> yes, we do. I know. I yeah. I just I no, think the right. Sens have done a lot of really good things, and this is just the latest among it, them. I don't know where my brain was going on the Cam Talbot stuff. Sorry, guys. it's a that's, fair that's point happens, that yeah. Artem Zub isn't you know, like your best fourth defenseman. You know that's your that's your second pairing defenseman. It's not the best idea. Sometimes sometimes a GM has a really good off season, but there's one thing missing mm-hmm. to make it perfect. If Pierre Dorian finds a way, and there have been rumors that he's been trying real hard, if he finds a way to dump Nikita Zaitsev, mm-hmm. Ooh. perfect. I, but you need to bring somebody else in. Yeah. The rumor. Uh, hasn't he got like one year? He's got one year left, Zaitsev, right? No. No, no he's Has got he? two. He's got two. 4.5 this he's year. He's still 4. got seven year oh. deal. Yeah, it was a long oh, wow. one. That is up there on Lou Lamarillo's bad contract modified word. modified no trade clause. Uh, so the rumor in the middle of August when there was nothing to talk about oh was that uh, Jacob Chikrin was something that the Sens were looking at. And he would be great. That. What a fit. Mm-hmm. That, that there's, your, there's your power. Well, uh, him and Shabbat. Power play quarterbacks, great puck movers. You need, that's what the fit sends need. Yeah. But get the puck back to the forwards. There's no reason for anybody to help out Ottawa here and take any of this money. You know, you'd have, are to, they? Be, you'd have to be giving a lot to They're not get capped, chicken. are they? Do, do the Ottawa no, but to acquire that player. Do the, okay. do the Sens have draft picks? Uh, they do. Okay, cool. Then Arizona's interested. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. You know, you send... Uh, uh, your first and second and Zaitsev and uh, it's it's it, the cost is astronomical. You have to protect the first. You didn't oh. make the playoffs last year. Like I know they're way better, but you didn't make the playoffs and, last you know, year. You have to protect. I, I know team. everybody wants to give Pierre his 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 uh, his due on this offseason and he deserves it. But I count that hammock deal as a part of like what the Sens were going to do this offseason, and I still don't get it. Oh man, I forgot about that deal. Like nobody yeah. wanted him, and he paid a fortune for him. And and the, and apparently and it was like widely reported, like when it makes it into the athletic, you're like, OK, so this is considered widely reported that the Canucks front office were like doing cartwheels. They were so excited. Oh, yeah. No, it's it, asking you shall receive sometimes, you know, like, hey, like this, this the reason I ask, the reason they could sign JT Miller is because they were able to do that Hammonick deal. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, man. And, like and eventually get Horvat done. 100%. The, the, this is why I always ask what do GMs do all day? Because <laughs> because what, what was it that what, I think it was Doug Armstrong said, like not all the GMs actually speak to each other? Yeah. Yeah, on Agent Provocateur, they said uh, that it's, the, it's the agents that are often brokering the trades. Right. So someone, I guess, went knocking on all the doors, <laughs> eventually got to Pierre Maguire's door, and he was like, I love that guy, and then left immediately. <laughs> Not Pierre Maguire. He was there. Yeah. You think Pierre Maguire was the one that orchestrated the Travis Hamannick deal? I, I have th- a hard time believing the other Pierre did based on the offseason. Fair either. enough. P- Pierre Maguire was the one in the owner's ear, according to all of the reports that we, that we had, that we knew. And once he was gone... Uh, Not even just reports, just assumptions based <laughs> just on assumptions. the move. We're like, oh, that, that's what happened. And, and once he passed away, you know, that Maguire was gone. I mean, there's, uh, there's a lot happening in ottawa senators land the i saw there was some i mean it wasn't big news but like labrette and flats news there's it's developing Mm -hmm. right there's still i think they said a year and a half worth of due diligence uh on that there's a lot um i i was speaking to a local a while back about everything they had to do to get labrette and flats even sort of ready to build on like th- there was something ab- the the land was bad mm-hmm. there was like it was i want to say it was like a, a chemical like the actual like dirt that. so they the would so they earth. would have to probably dig down six to eight feet because of leaching but if like that if, happened near our in our neighborhood right we had a a glass factory when we grew up and asbestos, that wasn't asbe- it? no it was covered it had asbestos in it but it was a glass factory and yes. so so they were because of leaching when you bought into that neighborhood after all the townhouses went up you had to sign a waiver saying that if if you were exposed to it or if you had any I forget what they call asbestosis or something if you got that that you you're signing off on that and that you're you're, you're okay with it all those townhouses like those across luxury the street townhouses from our, across the street from our high school oh my god yeah they were 
They were like they weren't luxury. They were beautiful, but they weren't like luxury, super high end townhomes. These are normal townhomes. Cool. But yeah, usually with something like I that, have. you have to get an environmental survey done. Yeah, and it's it depends on what level. I think there's like four of them. Yeah, and then you've got to dig down, and it's sometimes six to eight feet, sometimes more. To my understanding, it's Le Breton Flats. It's not a matter of just all right, put a shovel in the dirt and dig you said something interesting a couple of minutes ago when you said uh you got to protect that pick because you didn't make the playoffs last year mm. even with the incredible off season that the Suns have and i haven't done like my full research for our season preview and like predicting everything that's going to happen this year but mm. taking a glance at the division i'm not really sure who the Suns are supplanting in the playoffs so do I, they get one of those top four positions in the Atlantic? I was actually sort of thinking about this going forward. To me, the Atlantic is ridiculously even. The Metro is ridiculously even. Mm -hmm. The Pacific is ridiculously even. And that's kind of why I think Colorado might repeat. Yeah. Because the Central's fine. It's fine. It's haves and have nots, though. Yeah. It's abs and have nots. Yeah. Ha -ha. Hey, woo. Woo. Hey, woo. Hey. And I, I see what you're saying. I think out West, we could potentially see some of the same matchups like in the final. F I think the final four could be the same. Uh, uh, yeah. Potentially. Uh, did any of those teams get worse? And did anybody else in their divisions get better where you're like, no, not them anymore. Their time is over. Like, did the Blues get significantly better? No. Did the Wild get significantly better? Did the Preds get significantly actually really like their offseason? Yeah, they did. I think they did a good job. They significantly better. Yeah, they did some nice things. Are they, you know, are they are they four and out against the abs or are they is it a four two? <laughs> right. They they did some nice things. Um, is What was the who's the answer? Who did you, after UC Saros went down? Who was the answer? Oh, for man. The Preds? Um, Cam well, something. What was the no, um, no. What was the goalie's name? And you're like, he is the answer. Shit, it's right there. Oh, no. <laughs> we named an episode after this. I know. Oh, no. I think his name starts with an I. I, I Take a guess. Take a guess, Steve. Come it? on, go for it, Steve. Connor Ingram. Yeah! yeah! <laughs> you're think Adam, you're thinking of the Preds. That's what Con I mean. I thought you said the uh, the Blues. When UC no, I meant... Oh, UC Sorry. Yeah, I meant yeah, the, Preds. the Preds. Yeah, UC yeah. Saros is out. It's okay. We're still... It's preseason. It's preseason. Yes, yes, we're yes. we're, we're, Listen, we're up. warming up. So anyway, <laughs> sorry. This began about the Ottawa Centers. Um, and then I went to the Avalanche, which is bringing back some bad memories from 2017. <laughs> but uh, I... They... I don't think any of the teams in the Atlantic who made the playoffs last year have to be bad to miss them this year. Does that make sense? Like, I could see the Sens supplanting the Bruins or... Uh, no, name the other three. Leafs is tough. Leafs, Panthers. I've seen some projections that have the Panthers out, which is wild. And the me. Lightning. You're an idiot if you don't think no, the Lightning... No, the Lightning are, are not missing the playoffs. <laughs> and then are the Leafs? I don't think so. I think the Leafs are going to have a really tough October, and they might be out of a playoff spot at the end of October, but... By the end of the season, I don't know. The Florida Panthers won the President's Trophy last year. I know. Are you picking them to not make the playoffs? Yeah, it's honest, hard, man. That, so okay, I, an interesting question, and maybe today is not the the episode to ask it about the Panthers. And I know we're not. Is are they better? I'm trying to think of what they did. Well, they got Kachuk. They lost Huberto you know. and Weger. Mm -hmm. uh, that doesn't make them better. It doesn't. Uh, At not, least on paper, not immediately. Getting Matthew Kachuk. They're also over the cap by three and a half million dollars. Oof. The Huberto and Uyghur for Kachuk trade made sense in terms of the future. Mm -hmm. But in terms of you just won the President's Trophy and you're trying to win now, uh, it, it hurts you mm -hmm. quite a bit, I think. And you need to get that sort of season from Bobrovsky again. Yes. We'll, we'll see if he even has that season in him any anymore. So is Spencer Knight ready to be the guy? Like, was, they got their asses kicked by the Lightning. Right? Yes. There's two teams that had incredible... Uh, it's, it's funny that those two made a huge deal together because there were two teams who had incredible regular seasons who just shit the bed in the playoffs, <laughs> and it was the Panthers and the Flames. Mm -hmm. Both of them. Mm -hmm. uh, the Panthers... Who did they... They oh, got yeah. swept by the Lightning. Both teams didn't even look good in victory in their first round mm -hmm. win. And uh, in the second round, they they got killed. Was, was, it five, was it five or four by the Panthers and Lightning? 
They got swept. It was, it was a sweep, right? They got yeah. swept. And, I, and unless I'm seeing something wrong here, I don't, forgive me, but I haven't done my research on the uh, Panthers up and coming uh, uh, talent in terms of like what's their, what their farm they system looks guys. like. Yeah, they got some guys, but Mark Stahl is slotting in right now as their sixth defenseman. PTO? Oh, they... No, no Eric Stahl's on the PTO. And, oh, I forgot Mark about Stahl's Eric got Stahl. 750 grand. He's got it guaranteed. Bring back Joe Thornton and put him with Eric Stahl. Let's yeah. go. Not, not, listen, this is not a bad team. No, they this got some team, young guys, This too. team could win the President's Trophy. Who knows? Yeah. No, that's why, like, to me, the... But are they better? It's a really, really difficult season to call. Me. And I, I think the, it's going to be hilarious going back and looking once the season's over, looking at our Eastern Conference picks, because you can make an argument that both wild card spots in the East could be taken by either the Atlantic or the Metro. Definitely. Like, I was going to say that. And then I was thinking, OK, Penguins Capital. Oh, fuck. <laughs> yeah, it's it's the the East is stacked ridiculously even. There are teams who I wouldn't blame you if you thought they were a cup contender today who could miss the playoffs, man. It's a good conference, man. The West is good too. It's just that that central. So you got some weak spots. So we're back going back to Ottawa here. You're down with the Timmy Stutz contract. You're I down really with, like it. Obviously, you can't not be down with what the Sens have done this year. And you know what? To be honest with you, like I know we give them a hard time, and I give Stutz a hard time for diving, which he does. <laughs> and Ottawa is like when they're good, they're the Leafs' main rival, along with Montreal. Um, it's so good to see Ottawa back and exciting because it's a fun. Oh, yeah. It's a fun city when they're when that team is going. Usually they have really traditionally have had really fun teams to watch. Um, and it just makes like Saturday nights for Toronto Maple Leaf fans even better because you've got a real matchup. Similarly, Buffalo. They could be better. Where where do you hide in the Atlantic? I don't think Detroit's even that bad. Like we're not no one's given Detroit where they're due. They're they better. Made, they made a lot of acquisitions. They got better in net and uh well, which is a very low bar. And there's really only Montreal. But even they're going to be better. They're not going to make the playoffs, There's they're going to be better. For a while there, there was three easy outs, right? Especially last year. Montreal was bad, like the worst. Buffalo was bad. Detroit was bad. Yeah. And I think Detroit was actually worse than they thought they were going to be because I thought, I think they thought Ned was going to be better. He was. And then he wasn't. Wasn't. You know? Yeah. And so, so. uh, Carolina looked really stupid. For for a a team like the Leafs, for an up and coming team like Ottawa, um, for any of the perennial playoff teams currently in that Atlantic division, whoever comes out of it is going to be sharp because there's no easy outs. Boston is a fascinating team because yeah. they're re- the, well, really important parts of that team are old, frankly, old. But there's a real, and it's way overused in all sports, especially hockey, but there's a real last dance vibe there. Because Bergeron, I think, there, there's. Did, did you see what they did with their contracts? I'm looking at him right now. So he's got a two point five million dollar cap hit, and Krejci's got a really low one too. Mm-hmm. I can't remember what it is, but they have signing bonuses, and they're extremely easily attainable signing bonuses, mm-hmm. which means the Bruins are counting on those players hitting those signing bonuses. And having to pay the penalty next, next year. When it doesn't matter anymore because they're going to rebuild? Well, like they, they're, I mean, Bergeron, I assume, is going to retire. Krejci, I assume, is going to retire. And like they might even be saying goodbye to Pasternak. Yeah, um, he's going to stay. Already, that deal's uh, up. Unless they're able to get him done. I think he might still, is he a UFA or RFA? UFA. Oh, UFA. 27 yeah, year old UFA. God, time flies. Along with Zili- uh, Felino, Zaka, Craig Smith. Look how many run. expiring deals. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. list of expiring deals is insane. I kind of like that. I respect the uh, the last dance vibe to that because it's like, you know what? We're going to do it one more time. If it doesn't work out, okay. Yeah, and you're going to bet on the Sens knocking off the Bruins to make the playoffs? Ooh. But consider this. If things do go south for the Bruins, fire sale. And yeah. a hell of a fire sale. I, a good sale. I like that for an up-and-coming team like the Senators. You know, they've got some good veteran presence there now, but they got a lot of young guys. Mm-hmm. I... If I were them and I were their head coach or I was their general manager, when they play the Bruins, I would say, look at those people. They're not that much older than you. Mm -hmm. And they are this close to being done. This is it for them. It goes by fast. It goes by real fast. So make sure, get out there, play them well, and know that your time is limited here to make the most of it. And I think, I think what a great learning experience against, you know, teams. And then like the Leafs, another further along younger team. Um, People forget the Leafs core is quite young. 
uh, still. Jason Spezza tried that speech for three years. I know. Now, well, and it led to zero first round victory. Yeah, well, and now and now he's done. <laughs> tried in all. Yeah. yeah. Now, now he's, he's done. Fucking front and, now and he works him. for the team. So forever the Leafs have Spezza as this guy they really like. Th- this guy who had a really great pro career, but also just a monument to failure, not failure, but a monument to you don't get infinite chances. And he got really close once Mm -hmm. and he never got back. He never, ever got back to the Stanley cup final. They got to see that tortured look in Joe Thornton's eyes when they blew a three, one lead to Montreal. That was partially his fault, but he was terrible in game one, but there's, you could have just stopped it. He was terrible. He was terrible. He did, he was not good. He all scored year. a power play goal. He was, he was which a was a miracle was at the time. Game one. He was a non-option game for the one. Leafs. Come yeah. on, guys. Nah, give him some. And Sandine had a really bad game five because they took him out of game four. Anyway, <laughs> you don't get infinite kicks at the can here, and uh, you'll have Claude Giroux preaching that to the entire Sens room, mm-hmm. and please, someone get that through the Leafs room. <laughs> I think they know. They've been, they've been told this for the last fucking three years, they three, know. four years. Marlo was in here saying let's, the same Let's not shit. Leafs this. Let's yeah. not talk about no, the no, Leafs. No, no. Don't Adams, ruin my day. To Adam's <laughs> point, uh, with a little bit of the Leafs in there, it's so good to have the Sens back. Like, for, yeah. for us of this vintage, our best points of our childhood watching hockey was the Battle of Ontario. Yes. It was oh, Alfredson yeah. versus Sundin. Like, that rivalry when they would play in the, in the playoffs every single year, it seemed like. Um, that was the most fun time as a kid watching hockey. And like to have the Sens back as a really good team, which they are, which I think they will be, mm-hmm. it's going to be great for, for hockey and for Toronto versus Ottawa rivalry. It's one of the most classic rivalries we have. To I think it's, Cat, man. Oh, oh fuck. Yeah. It's going to oh. be, you know, he's going to haunt Leafs fans' dreams for a long, long time. It's going to be Cat. fun. I think, I think uh, if, if he, if Stutzla. Because the Leafs could have drafted him and should have drafted him. If, oh, I know. If Stutzla is uh, Debrinkat's center, which I assume he will be, mm-hmm. uh, he'll be calling Pierre to rip up that contract by American Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. I want to also talk about another Atlantic Division deal. Kirby Dock, 21 years old, career high points last year with Chicago with 26. He gets a four-year contract uh, worth, I think, three points. Yeah, this is a weird number. Three point. Three six two five. Uh, I think I think Julian announced it yesterday and like rounded it up to three point five. He's like, excuse me. Actually, what it is is three point three six two five. Oh, so sure. What are we? That's to what ma- got it done. Now, what are we to make of a deal like this? Because it's a young guy with a lot of talent, some size. Definitely fills a need for the Canadians if he performs to what they think he's going to be. Is this a case of hey, you traded for me and I'm on RFA? You're going to have to sign the contract. Or do the Canadians really truly believe that the value is there immediately? I think they believe the value is there immediately because the opportunity is going to be there immediately. Um, you know, it's it's going to be hard to push them down the lineup when you've gotten rid of <laughs> so much of the lineup. It's a dollar amount that if if he doesn't really work out, you're not going to regret that much. And like, what's it, what's it going to screw up your contention window? They're rebuilding, so I think. If it becomes a problem, it's a problem that's out of the way before it's really a problem. Mm-hmm. Not and, an untradable deal at three and a half. No, and he's really young. He'll always have the, hey, I was third overall uh, pedigree. And by the time the deal's done, lucky him, mm-hmm. if he does outperform the deal, the cap will be well up by then. I think it's a good deal for both sides. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Good deal. I mean, yeah, it does have the potential to suck, but... The, the the chances of that are pretty slim. Well, it's not just the chance, it's the stakes. If the contract sucks, if the Kirby Doc contract sucks, so what? That's what I mean. At 3.3, yeah. who cares? You're not paying him six or seven million bucks. Three po- who cares? Who cares? The the odds of him outperforming that deal, I would say, are rather high. Okay. And good Caulfield, good. Doc, and Suzuki is a good little future to build around. That's a and lot of fun. Slavkovsky. Your eye. Right. Now, there's a, a lot of actually, uh, a lot of, I guess because there's not a lot to talk about at the beginning of September, but there, uh, it was sort of a uh, conversation in the Montreal media yesterday about whether or not he would be ready to make the team out of camp and whether or not that's a disappointment because there's only been a couple of guys who haven't done it in the last 20 years. Eric Johnson was the last first overall pick to not start right away. Right. Yeah. And I... 
And Owen Power, actually. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Last year. And that was his choice, I think, wasn't it? Uh, it was, I mean, it was the logical choice. It was. <laughs> it was. Hey, we're, you're pretty good and we're trying to not be that. Yeah. So how about you take off? What do you think is, um, what do you think is, is, does the fallout match what actually is going on? Like what, is there a need to have Slavkovsky on the lineup, in the lineup this year? Like if he's ready, he's ready. <laughs> but if there's even an, an inkling that he's not, do they care? I don't think there is an inkling that he's not. I think it's just, is, is it the right decision to have him in the NHL right away? You know what I mean? Like, is it like having him? I uh, think they're uh, trying to keep his number down, frankly. Well, and I think Andrew was like, hey, having his number, his contract slide wouldn't be the worst. It, it wouldn't be. But like, if you're, remember how much shit Marner and his camp gave the Leafs? for not giving him like class B bonuses and mm -hmm. putting him on the fourth line as a rookie and stuff like that. Like players are going to remember if they had an opportunity to make the team and you artificially kept them off. Yes. You know what I mean? This isn't, this isn't Owen power. Uh, this is a very different situation. I think it's a good idea to get Slavkovsky in the lineup as fast as possible. Cause like you said, Jesse, they have this young core to build around. I would get uh, Slavkovsky familiar with the likes of Suzuki and Doc as his centers as soon as possible. I also think like that lends to the option of where he'll play if he's not in the NHL, mm -hmm. which would be overseas with men uh, and uh, a yeah. little older than him. So if he's doing that, why not just do that in the NHL? Played or in Finland, right? Uh, I think it was Finland. It was a Finland? Yeah. Um, yeah. I can check for you in half a second. Um, it was Sweden. Finland? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what that league is. It's just a bunch of numbers. Utah. That is Finland. That's Finland? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Sarja? Uh, Sorry. No, I just saw SM Liga. That's, okay, I don't have so my glasses on. Cool. Online. Finland. Try, so, like, his, his try doing Finnish in, in English is his, his option is to either play over there with men above his age. Yeah. So, why not just do that in the NHL with your teammates? Or the AHL is also an option where you don't want him. So, I think, like, yeah. you have this what is it that it's 10 games you get before you burn your ELC? Nine, nine games. So, you get the nine game tryout. If he looks okay, keep him. I said keep him. Yeah, I don't think it hurts. Keep him. The, the The reason I think it's a story now is you you need to make this decision now because they're already playing games that count in Europe, mm. right? Or mm -hmm. they're about to. But he's gonna he's gonna do his tryout regardless. But yeah. they need to figure it out with the team and like everything. I just I leave him on the Canadians. You're not trying to win. You know, he'll be good. Development I, starts earlier. Also, yeah. Well, didn't you learn last year that Martin Saint Louis is kind of good at this? Like with Cole Caulfield, mm -hmm. imagine if he's able or, to do that with Slavkovsky. Or and I'm, apologies to everybody. Or Dom Ducharme's just bad at this. Adam Wild is is Marty Saint Louis that good, or was Dom Ducharme that bad? Who hurt you, and why was it Dom Ducharme? <laughs> because it's it was bad. It was bad. It was. Look, bad. you look at just look at Cole Caulfield. You want to tell me that that guy just it was it was so funny. People are like I don't understand what's wrong with Cole Caulfield. I'm like, oh, you mean the guy that wouldn't start objectively the best player, one of the best players in the lineup for the playoffs against the Leafs and Maybe got the lucky? Best goal scorer. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. you mean that he he's not the right guy to coach this player? No way. No what a way. shock. And you look at him before and after. Marty Saylor was like, uh, yeah, just go play hockey. So, okay, if Don Ducharme was Dom still the coach. out there, Galaxy Brandon, Cole Caulfield, just so let him play. If he was still the coach, Slavkowski should start in Finland. <laughs> but now that he's not, I think he should start with the Habs. There it is. Makes sense. There you go, Steve. I remember in August when we never talked about the Dom Ducharme article. I know. I I'm remember. sorry. <sighs> Whatever, man. We had other shit to talk people about. People were commenting on it in the, the people last were video. upset. They're still I mad. Know. I we guess could still do it. I but mean, we could do it next no. week if you want oh, to. He no. still doesn't like him. <laughs> <laughs> still doesn't like him. I don't think he's a bad guy. I just think he was a bad coach and a bad fit and <laughs> another bad Bergeron pick. What yeah. a surprise. Bergevin. Yeah, not Bergeron. No, That's Bergeron's never made a wrong pick. He's not a bad guy. You just think he's completely incompetent. Yes, and I'm shocked that LA picked him up so quickly. Kings fans, beware. I'm just saying. They did. That guy's, yeah. He's oh, Bergevin. Yeah. My bad. Oh, I was I like Ducharme. Ducharme. No. no, no, no um, no, I'm not. That's where he was rumored to be yeah. going. I'm just saying, you have a line of, let's say, 
Slavkovsky, Suzuki, Caulfield. Habs fans don't give a shit if they win a single game as long as they score. Agreed. And then Connor Bedard. <laughs> no. Dude, it could happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely could happen. It was a pretty it was a decent Connor chance. Connor Bedaddy, I believe, is what they call him now. Oh, it's uh, Connor Bizzatti. Bizz- <laughs> You're such sorry, a boomer. Sorry, sorry. How dare you? Um, Jesse's got the audio for this, and I'm pretty sure we can run it, right? Yeah. Okay, so... so <laughs> Give it a shot. If you are a fan of hockey, nah. and you like hockey personality, what's interesting about Phil Kessel is that he's a hockey personality because he lacks personality. You know, Phil, Phil is such a unique guy... But to, but to say that you're like, oh, Phil, what a charismatic dude. He's not, but that's what's so lovable about him. And, you know, there's the clips like uh, uh, Pierre Maguire asking him if he's out of breath and Phil thinking he just had bad breath. Yeah, you go, how's your breath? He goes, it's pretty bad, huh? <laughs> and then, uh, and then the, uh, and then, you know, when he put his house on sale in Pittsburgh and there's a theater room and there's one lonely relaxing See, chair in the, i love it in the th- but there's also amazing things that have happened in phil kessel's career uh hundreds of goals the longest iron man streak hopefully to be broken this year mm-hmm. uh um, relatively early too relatively early absolutely he ties um, it versus the leafs he ties versus the leafs yeah. he breaks he, it know, versus the coyotes his his I, I don't know if he's married but his his partner has a baby or is about to have a baby he gets on the ice for one shift gets oh, off and goes yep. <laughs> make sure he doesn't miss that shift which i think is amazing yeah you know, there's something to love about Phil Kessel, and he, of course, has signed a contract now. And you should want Phil Kessel on your team at this point. This is a two-time Stanley Cup winner. Should have been a Conn Smythe winner. He, yeah. He was ridiculously productive on the Coyotes last year. He just sort of had a bad start. Team. team <laughs> also. Mm-hmm. Um, and, like, dude, his 92-point season with Pittsburgh was so recently. Yeah. I, I, I know he's probably on the downward trend, but this is... Especially on the Golden Knights, mm-hmm. this guy should be able to fetch you fifty points. See, he's a career ten point eight percent shooter. That's it, which is weird. It's really not high. No, he's a goal scorer. His sniping days are done. I. But what I'm saying is that are you telling me that fifty two points for one and a half million dollars isn't worth it? It's really good. He's one of the most underrated playmakers in the whole league. Right, and I think he has been for quite some time. I, I think the idea because his his shooting percentage the year before was seventeen. Usually, it clocked in over the course of his career around twelve. I think if this guy shoots 9-10%, he's 20-25 goals this year. I believe it. And why couldn't he? Vegas is a hell of a wild card. It is. In this league. Could so, miss the playoffs, could win the cup. I don't what know. did Phil Kessel have to say at his press conference, Jesse? So he spoke to the Las Vegas Review Journal when he signed his, co- his one-year deal with the uh, Vegas Golden Knights. And here's what he had to say about coming to Vegas. You no, know, I came in there... Um, as a different direction, right? They, you know, they said we're going to win and, you know, we're going to try to win and compete. And, you know, obviously that's not what happened. And, you know, uh, it's going to be nice playing on a team that wants to win. You know, when you want to win and everyone on the team wants to win, it's a, it's a different feeling and a different vibe. I mean, Arizona, they had great guys, you know, the, you know, all the players are, they're great kids and a lot of good people there. But, you know, when you don't want to necessarily win and contend, it's, it becomes difficult as a player, especially when you came from Pittsburgh and, you know, I wanted to win. I don't understand why Phil Kessel wasn't just blanket praising the Arizona Coyotes for no reason. No, not winning is good. It's good. Mm Mm-hmm. We should just blanket praise everything they do. Are you being sarcastic? Yeah, very much Were so. Were people <laughs> mad about this? Uh, no, 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 no. Not this. I'm trying to make it about the arena. Oh, anyway, oh. Well, oh, I, um, I love Kessel's bluntness, and that's, I feel like that's kind of an underrated story that so, it sounds like the Coyotes sold him a false bill of goods. This isn't something we hear players talk about all the time. You know, usually if it's a tanking team, like a team that is not out to win, like the Canadians, you'll hear Caulfield be like, okay, it's a rebuilding season. We're developing a lot. Yeah. But here's a veteran player openly saying, I was on a team that was trying not to win and it fucking, I wasn't happy with it. But and now no, I get to be in a situation where I get to win. Not just that they were trying not to win. They told him they were going to try. Right. When he signed the contract, he thought it was a whole different thing. Because he got traded there and signed an extension, I think. Uh, I'm actually. Or no, 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 no. He still. He, was it the his Leafs contract just expired? Right. So he had no choice. I get uh, yeah, over was, the matter in Arizona. Right. I want to say Galchenyuk was involved in the trade. 
because he's involved in most trades. Mm -hmm. Most trades in NHL history involve Alex Galchenyuk and Mike Sillinger. Those two. Is Galchenyuk playing this year in in Arizona again? He's not signed. I don't think. Hmm. That's so, so disappointing, man. Anyway, Kessel. <laughs> Kessel had a, the Le- on the Leafs contract, that's the one that Arizona was paying. Uh, he had a modified no trade clause and a no movement clause. His no trade clause was an eight team trade list. So I assume Arizona wasn't on that list and that's how Pittsburgh sent him over there. But I, it's weird that you get traded to a place and they tell you, hey, we're going to win. And then they're the Coyotes. They're the Coyotes. <laughs> and all they've done is gut their lineup for years. And they might not be done. They might get Connor Bedard. Mm-hmm. We need more players like Phil who just talk. Just Honestly, don't give it, it, all, a shit. All he did was just sit there and talk like we're friends. Really, really underrated storyline that I'm just going to throw it into the world. Vegas. They're a saucy team. They're a saucy team and they get a little grumpy. They do. It's kind of grumpy times in Vegas right now. Oh, yeah. They could compete for the stanley cup they could go really deep in the playoffs or or let me throw it out there the potential drama between phil kessel and jack eichel having those two in the same locker room they're grumpy guys can someone please document the entire (laughs) vegas Vegas. golden knight season oh yeah yeah hell yeah Yeah. adam (laughs) i want all or nothing vegas golden knights this season you have jack eichel and phil kessel in the same room are you nuts and it's Vegas! Film the whole thing. Um, the an- whole thing. Put an- a ring camera in every stall. I think, I don't know how low-key this is, but I do Locker think... room stall. I do Not think the- you need to have a look at the fact that the Vegas Golden Knights are... They are significantly over the cap, although I'm sure they'll have some uh, long-term injury reserve. Well, <laughs> Who's going to be their goalie this year? Is it Lauren Brassois, Aiden Hill, or Logan Thompson? They just made that Aiden Hill signing, didn't they? Yeah. I think uh, that's, trade, yeah. Yeah, trade. That's who they're probably going to go with. I think it, well, Aiden Hill's probably the default starter just based on money. And if you missed it, by the way, Robin Leonard is out the entire season, I believe, with hip surgery. And this was the injury. Sort of this was the injury that Peter DeBoer wouldn't let him get and made him start. You know what's weird is I'm not sure it is. Because I, I thought, that you thought was there was another one? I thought that was a shoulder thing. Oh. It's goalies, man. It's, it's totally, it's a tough thing. You want to be so, a pro athlete? It's but, but here's the one thing that. That, you know, obviously I love Phil Kessel, but I don't think that Phil Kessel is going to win you Stanley Cup alone or even get you to the playoffs alone anymore. Uh, one guy that I'm, I'm very curious to see what he do, does with this team is Bruce Cassidy. Bruce Cassidy. He's a good coach. And, and two Bruins cast offs. But, but the goaltending is a big question. Logan Thompson was good down the stretch, but like he might not even start in the NHL. So that's a difficult one. Uh, Hill, Brassois, you could do better. And Hutchinson. Hutchinson, but now <laughs> Hutchinson. Part of a hutch dog? No. Now, now he's the fourth goalie, I believe. Yeah. Is he? Yeah. yeah. Because, well, there was a brief yeah, time he is. this offseason where he was, I want to say, the backup, <laughs> uh, which is tough. That's a tough way to be. Um, th- I don't think their goaltending is as bad as people think, but it's it's not a strength. Mm-hmm. I'll I'll give you that, uh, Steve. You're also right about it was so- shoulder surgery that shut down Leonard in uh, from what was it February to April or whatever it was, and yeah. then now it's hip surgery. Oh. So his whole body is just I don't know if he's coming back. It's hard miles, man. Yeah, hard miles. Goalies, uh, goalies struggle. They do, mm-hmm. and they he's do. a he's a bigger goalie too. One of the few left, like in terms of uh, they're all tall, but most of them are. Skinny, he's he's thick. And him, him, and Freddie Anderson. I don't imagine if Vegas goes on any type of run early on in the season that come the trade deadline, these three goalies are their goalies. Like I think they go out and they try and acquire somebody because that's what Vegas does. They go out and buy whatever asset they want, and whoever they have to sell to get it, they don't give a shit. So I'll I feel fasc- like they're gonna go get a goaltender. I'll be fascinated to see if they can get a Vesna caliber goalie for nothing. <laughs> They've done it twice. They've, yeah, they have done it. They have done it. Uh, well, they no, they got it, and then they gave it away, I think, is what they did. Um, hey, uh, sportsinteraction.com slash SDPN. Obviously, football starts tonight. Steve will be all over it. He'll be like, da na na da na na Yeah. da na da na Well, that's my favorite part, is the music. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> 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 and the food it's very exciting i think all the pressure in the world's on the buffalo bills right now um i want to ask you this jesse have you ever done a pinata pick 
Uh, yeah, I actually, I know what these are. Yeah. What? Tell me, tell me about your pinata pick. What have you well, done? Well, the pinata pick's not up to, it's not up to me. You know, it's, uh, it's Sports Interaction has these cool picks where they, you, you place the bet and then they shoot out a team and that's your bet. So they have one what? right now. I don't, do you have the odds in front the of you for the great. Super Bowl pick? So the Super Bowl 57 winner, your pinata pick, if, let's just say you win this, 25 to one, mm-hmm. your pick. And the, so you place the bet 25 to 1 on any team to win the Super Bowl, and then the pinata spits out your team. So you don't know what team you're betting on until you place the bet, and then they give you a team. It could be any team, one of the 32. See, I was like, I don't know about that. And then I was like, I might as well do that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know anything about any of the teams. You know what? Uh, that's kind of fun. Yeah. That's kind of fun. I like it's that. cool because, like, if uh, like you get a team like, let's say, the Eagles, who I don't know how in front, but maybe they're fifteen to one to win the Super Bowl. If you just bet on them like that, you at the pinata, you get them at twenty five to one. And all of a sudden, you care about the Eagles. Yeah, yeah. You're like, go Eagles <laughs> all season. You got a team. That's yeah. kind of neat. And they're super kind fans. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I do want to see a game in Philly because I just I've heard it's just wild in there. Oh, absolutely. Like the flyer, I think. Honestly, I think you, you got to go in the fall. You got to go see, like, a, 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 if you can, so go see a Flyers game on the Saturday and then a Phil's or a, an Eagles game on the Sunday. And I will wear a Flyers jersey and an Eagles jersey and I will be like, go local sports team. <laughs> <laughs> Just do my best to blend in and have a good time. I was, I was looking at going down to Pittsburgh this year and I don't think it's going to happen, but I was looking oh. for a game where... Pittsburgh! You just, oh. said, you just said last episode that it was happening. We're, go- we're I know. Uh, oh, I hate them. It was, it was my mom. Oh. It was my mom that canceled it because it was going to be American Thanksgiving. And oh. It was going to be against the Bengals, which would have been sweet. But I think they would have probably. I, the way the Steelers are looking, eh? Um, but it was. I wanted to do Penguins. Uh, uh, Penguins Steelers weekend. And I want to happen. do more and more. I don't know if it's going to happen, Jesse. Unless we make it happen. I like I mean, you got to make it happen. It that Philly. sounds like a good time. Yeah. If, What's that? If you do it in Philly, you can just cross the street. That's, yeah, they're the baseball, football, and hockey all in the same mm-hmm. place. It's a nice. smart way to do it. Absolutely. Anyway, uh, you can check that out at sportsinteraction.com, 19 plus. Please play responsibly. Obviously, all your football ads um, and, of course, some live betting, especially right now with uh, lots of soccer games happening uh, and, uh, and of course, tennis. And there's F1 this weekend. You know, another Steve thing that he's super excited about. <laughs> Why like, did you watch Drive to Survive on your summer break? Yeah. I, I'm jerk. sure you know all about Oscar Piastri. You oh, jerk. man. It's, he's, he's a grouch. It's, he's not. He's a very nice little oh, Australian guy. Well, his name is Oscar. I tried. Very nice young man. Um, let's, can you do a pinata pick for the NHL? I'm sure you can. I'm sure you can. We'll find out. Let's see what they it's got. A really even league. I yeah, think when so. the season comes up, there'll probably be something. Like, like honestly, that. you're right. If you're going to do a pinata pick... As long as you don't get the Sabres, like... Uh, I think it'd be fun to just be like, I am a huge Leafs fan, and also... Brrr, do, 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 the Preds, I guess. I don't know. You could I do worse. Like David Poyle. Does it make a sound? No, I don't think it does. No, it's <laughs> I don't. I, I mean, like listen, a price is right. We could no, talk to wheel. Dave Bastel if you want him. They don't have, have a wheel on yeah, the Yeah, that'll website. be my contribution. <laughs> I need it to make a noise. <laughs> I need it to make a whimsical sound. Football is back. The Blue Jays are gunning for a playoff spot, and the NHL season is around the corner. And how do you know? It's because we're back. Yeah. We're here. Uh, all the action starts at Sports Interaction. It's Canada Sportsbook. Uh, bet before the game, live and in play, or on one of the many prop bets. They've been doing it right since 1997. Sports Interaction makes it easy to deposit, play, and cash out. Join now to see all sports betting has to offer. Head on over to sportsinteraction.com slash STPN. That's sportsinteraction.com slash STPN. 19 plus. Please play responsibly. I want to include you guys in the ad. I realized I was sort of taking all the script. And Thanks. Sorry Thanks, about Dad. that. Smooth sack summer is slowly coming to an end, fellas. <laughs> no. No. If you haven't been scaping for the summer sun, it's not too late to sweep your sack of those pesky pubes. That's a lot. As summer comes to an end and we enter fall, keep the boys clean and fresh just in time for the f- for fresh ball fall. <laughs> no! The leader in below the belt grooming is here to make sure your pubes feel f- smoother than a beach ball and smell fresher than pumpkin spice. Oh. Start the new season the right way and do what over 6 million men worldwide who have done, done it to. Manscaped, you got to trust it. Did you write this? No, I didn't. 
I don't believe you. No, I didn't write it. I, I didn't. don't believe you. <laughs> what was the fall one? Uh, smooth. No, fresh ball fall. Fresh ball fall. Get into smooth it. Smooth sack summer. Get Let's go. Um, twenty percent off. Free worldwide shipping with the code Dangle at Manscaped.com. You already know what it does, right? Does all the things. Shave your balls. That's right. Manscaped. They're back for the fall. We need to talk about the fact that Carolina picked up two pretty solid players for l- close to nothing this yep. offseason. Uh, and they were able to dump Tony D'Angelo and actually... Oh my God, quote, that unquote, trade. Make a profit. So let's start, as we like to do, from the beginning of the... Uh, from when man made fire. But Tony <laughs> D'Angelo <laughs> traded to... If you, if you haven't caught this, he was traded to Philadelphia. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the Canes got this at 20... 20- 22 seventh rounder and a uh sorry sorry they gave up a 2026 they got a fourth a conditional third and a second round selection so the fourth will be already happened the third will be next year the second round selection will be 2024 and not the bad flyers gave them five million bucks not bad mm-hmm. now um they also got max patcheretti in a cap dump from vegas that one's unfortunate yes and it's it just, was such a good deal too absolutely it's a great it's a great pickup and then and this happened uh, over the summer break. The Sharks and Hurricanes officially uh, finished this trade. Stephen Lorenz, Etu Makanyemi, uh, and a conditional 2023 third round selection from the Hurricanes in exchange for Brent Burns and Lane Peterson, making the Carolina Hurricanes um, uh, the only team. Sorry, this now it was they were the only team to have Niemis, and now they have one Niemi. Oh. <laughs> That sucks. I know they had all. They had the. They had a lockdown. You on. had a monopoly on Niemis. The Burns trade was very odd because it happened on the same day that the Patches trade happened, but like we didn't get the official uh, announcement until like the, we were off. The yeah, it was air, weird like, until August. It yeah. was a month a, later. I think they were trying to figure out what because here's the weird part: the Sharks are retaining thirty four percent of Brent Burns's contract. It's a very specific amount. So I think that they were working out the mountain. Yeah, there was a whole mm-hmm. bunch of stuff getting done because, like, yeah, it was a f- couple weeks later. So what is Brent Burns now? Uh, a still a huge defenseman who's not incredibly mobile, um, or good at defense really, but he's tough and he can still put up a ton of points. He's an interesting fit for Carolina. Mm-hmm. Um, who do like to move the puck. It's it's weird. I feel like Carolina is all about Brent Burns' strengths and... Can cover his weaknesses. I think they can cover his weaknesses, but his weaknesses make him a strange match for them. I think that'll be a fascinating conversation between Carolina Hurricanes management and Rod Brindamore and the coaching staff. Why do you say that? Well, just how they use him is so important. I think how Brent Burns is used, if you use him properly, you're winning the division. Mm -hmm. Uh, Because you got the goaltending. uh, You have the personnel to shelter him. Mm -hmm. You have great scoring players. Your trade deadline acquisition is going to be Max Pacioretty. Yeah. uh, Because he's (laughs) out, I think, six months. Yep. Surgery. So your trade deadline acquisition is a guy who is one of the most underrated goal scorers in the league last year, frankly. It's just he didn't play very much. Um, you just got to be careful with a guy who's kind of up there. Well, and and here he's 37. He's still got this year, next year, and the year after. He makes 20 grand less than Oof. Slavin. Um, and, and that's with retention. That's with retention. Yeah. I didn't realize the contract was so long. It is a long still contract. Th- he's got till he's 40. Dude, the Sharks have some nightmare deals and his was one of them. Even though he's good. You're never going to get out of the Vlasic deal. So you got to move the other ones. Ah, who does I Adam Wilde do hate more? Uh, Dominic Ducharme or Eric Carlson who uh, got upset that one time about winning? I don't hate Eric Carlson. <laughs> I don't hate. I actually, you know what I, I dislike the most on the Sharks is there is Vlasic's contracts the worst. I uh, it, it, they signed that when he was thirty two. S- Sens fans, by the way, I'm talking to you again. Um, Sens fans have been asking me off the hook for the Eric Carlson trade tree. Mm-hmm. Oh, you got to do that. I do, but it's too young. It's too early, dude. That is, a, I, I don't remember exactly what the Sens got, but I know they got the Stutzla pick and they got Josh Norris. 
Bing bang. That's like, their who two cares? highest paid players besides Brady. Who cares what else you got? Like, you, you should won. do that trade tree in like 20 years. Like, those guys are career NHLers. They're going to be around. Hey, everyone. Who <laughs> wants to see the most unexpectedly bad trade in NHL history? Like, that trade's awful. Yeah. Holy shit. Do you think that the Sharks are ever going to be able to move out Eric Carlson or Mark Edward Vlasic? No. No. So whether or not Eric Carlson wants to win, it's really besides the point because his contract won't let him. At least, or he's got to sit through the rebuild until they, they can't. I, didn't he have sort of a bounce back season? The yeah, no, but it doesn't mean he's not good. Um, that's not what I'm saying. He's the highest paid defenseman in the league, isn't he? Yes. 11.5. And, and my point Ooh. is, my point is, you're not moving that. It's so funny at that at least until 2025 we got onto this conversation because he spoke to the Athletic today about this very issue. Oh, he really? did. Yeah. Uh, what did he say? So Carlson confirmed to the Athletic that he has not requested a trade and added he's hopeful for the future of the team under new general manager Mike Greer. No, Carlson said, I committed here a long time ago. It didn't work out the way we wanted it to early on. There's a lot of things that probably played into that. I'm not going to get into details about that. But I am excited for the future here now. I hope we can move in the direction to be successful again. Is that going to be this year? I mean, who knows? But I do think something good can come out of here. For the record, the first year Carlson was in San Jose, they made it to the conference final and lost to the team who ended up winning the cup in the St. Louis Blues. This dude was so fucking good. 2017 playoffs. Oh, He had 18 points in 19 playoff games with a broken foot. Oh. And then the Suns missed the playoffs, and they weren't very good, but he still had 62 points. And then with the Sharks, 16 points in 19 playoff games. He was so, so, so good. And last year, he still had 35 points in 50 games. It's really good. The dude can, like, he and Brent Burns You didn't need them together. Some No, you didn't. But they're somewhat similar in that both can still move the puck both can still put up a ton of points both are still right-handed which matters um but defensively are a bit of a nightmare uh it's just it seemed like it was difficult for carolina to make the brent burns trade work and it's going to be even harder to make carlson work it makes 11.5 i think you're not moving that until 2025 it's possible, but holy shit, he makes that's a lot. It's a lot. He uh, he also went on to talk about because they asked him, okay, so you got a new head coach. Do you see yourself getting a career resurgence? And his answer was no. He said, not really. Maybe if I was younger, it may be a little different. I've played for a lot of different coaches. I am who I am at this point. So I, I agree with him on that. Yeah, I can see he, that. It's it's a very realistic view of his abilities at this point with all the injuries he's gone through. I was about so to I commend say him for that. I was about to say he scored at a 57 point pace last year, which is wild for a defenseman that, but that is if he played 82 games mm -hmm. and I think he's done doing that. He can't hard miles, man. Like yeah. really? Well, and, and it's, it's whether or not he can pivot now a couple of years ago, he couldn't pivot on that one foot. He couldn't turn left. Yeah. That I think it was Pete Blackburn. That there, tweet was, he had a tweet of one particular goal and it's just like, I this, remember it. This guy's cooked. Yeah. And, but but that not, was years ago, and he still had a good no. He's, ish he's season. It's just it's it depends on what you need him for, mm -hmm. right? What age is that uh, when he? What age is Carlson when the contract expires? Uh, that is a good question, Jesse. Is that a trivia question? So he's got <laughs> this year, the year after, the year after, the year after, the year after. One, two, three, four, five years left. Full no move. And how old is he now? Uh, old enough. Twenty six, twenty seven. Is when that deal expires. He's, he's thirty-two. <laughs> okay. He'll be he'll be Brent Burns' age. And I was trying to look for a, a path to a trade with the money that he makes, but that is also a nightmare. So this year, he has a two million dollar base salary and a ten million dollar <laughs> signing bonus. I think. Holy shit! I think it's unfair. I, I think if we're going to give Doug Wilson some credit here, because he's the one that signed the contract, I realize he's not the GM there anymore. He, like everybody else, thought that the the um, a pandemic was likely not to happen. Oh, like, like for that was signed before that, right? So you know, like yeah. a lot of some of these contracts, people are like, what a, what a nightmare! What was he fucking thinking? Like you know, no, I think everybody expected that the cap would be hovering right now around ninety million dollars, and then that's not thirteen percent of your cap; it's eleven percent, and then each year it goes down a little bit more. A little you bit. also you also got to give credit to any GM that goes for it. 
and signing yes, the did. signing did. the Burns uh, Vlasic Carlson deals is a team that's really is like this is our window. We're trying to do it, and the, and the Sharks got so damn close, and we're not looking at it like this. If they just win a thing, most people take for granted. Adam Adam's got a great point here. Most people do not. Uh, <laughs> prior to March 2020, most people do not. Uh, run their lives and conduct themselves like the world is about to stop. And that's, that's why I think you're seeing bigger and more desperate moves and screw it. There is no tomorrow. (laughs) And I mean, the coyotes are like, that's great that you think there's no tomorrow. Give us all of tomorrow. Yes. Like they, they, they might come out of it really, really strong. Oh, they will. Um, but I mean, Carlson, we knew two things about him when that contract was signed. He's one of the best defensemen in the world. Mm-hmm. he's going to deteriorate. It's probably not going to happen as fast as it actually happened. Yeah. And you know, so you think bodies you do th- recover. Okay. But so you think that the, sometimes. the, the, the quick, the quicker deterioration we've seen the last couple of years will flatten out. I think he's already on the come up. Okay. Oh, okay. He, he really struggled for a while. Like the, uh, I, I, we, we get to watch a lot of highlights, uh, when it comes to like hat picks and dang it's and fuck. He was awful. Just awful. Now, should you be playing the highest paid defenseman in the league in a sheltered role? No. Uh, if ifs and buts were candy and nuts, would we all have a Merry Christmas? Yes. Uh, neither of those. I've never understood that saying, and you're the only one I've ever heard say it, but I like it. Really? Yeah. Oh, I don't get it. I don't, I don't get it, and I don't know where I got it. But anyway. Um... There's there's a path to Carlson being I think Carlson is a, a good contributor for the Sharks at 33 it, points in 50 games I guess. He's, yeah. He's ridiculously overpaid but there is a I think there is some clever coaching that could happen there that could lead to him being mm-hmm. an elite player again. Well, and and I I like to think that some of these newer GMs are are smarter than the old especially with the cap being 20 years old coming up here we're coming up on 20 years of nhl cap and and i think that the the education around it's far better and you look at like um you look at some of the cap issues they have i think vlasic is their biggest problem they gotta move that deal um but you can get creative like if bill Guerin with 15 million dollars tied behind his back in cap space that's been taken up for those buyouts for the next three years if he expects to be mm-hmm. um if he expects to be a contender or at least com- competitive getting into the playoffs He's got to be creative. We'll see how good Bill, Bill Guerin is. And I think we'll see how good Mike Greer is. And by the way, um, I going back to your point about you got to respect a team that goes for it. Any, any Leaf fan, oh, Jesse, okay. Any Leaf fan would, no, would trade, <laughs> would, I, just to see the Leafs in the Stanley Cup finals, which the San Jose Sharks got to and won a couple games. 2016. You know? like yeah, what Pre-Carlson, you, I but would, still. I would trade... I would trade whatever for the last 10 years that they've had. Mm-hmm. Mm. Their issues, these are good problems to have. These are problems that you have after the, the good times Man, are kind of over. They got close a few times. They though. sure did. Yeah. Boy, they were good. They got close a few times over a number of years. Like, yes. They got close with like Nabokov. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's torture. <laughs> torture. Quick trivia. Mm. Let's do it. Uh, we've established that Eric Carlson makes $11.5 million as a defenseman. Name the second highest de- defenseman in the NHL. Mm. The only other defenseman to make double digits. Not Petrangelo. Oh, it's Drew Doughty. Oh, yeah. Drew Doughty, $11 million. Can you name the third highest defenseman? Not Petrangelo. Also double digits or no? They are the only two defensemen that make right, double digits. Right, you just said that. Sorry. So it's not Petrangelo? It's, I want to say... You're incorrect. I want to say there's two defensemen who make 9.5. McAvoy's... Or no, who's the one above Boston signed? Yeah, there's McAvoy, who I think makes nine. Okay, so he's not it McCarr, then. McCarr, I think, makes nine. Which he should. And I want to say Seth Jones and Zach Wierenski both make 9.5. Yes! Put your, put your brains together and deliver me one name of the defenseman, who is the third highest paid defenseman Wierenski. in the NHL. Wierenski makes 9.5 for sure. Yeah. So Seth Jones Zach has got to be, I, think, I thought Seth Jones was nine. Wierenski. You have delivered the correct answer. Yeah. What, what Zach about Seth Wierenski Jones? makes nine point five eight three. <laughs> well, the eight three. Uh, Seth Jones uh, makes nine point five. Oh. Uh, so Zach Wierenski wins that. 
And Adam Fox also makes oh, 9.5. Yeah. Charlie McAvoy also makes 9.5. Here, so there's, here. There's a tie in the can you, 9.5. Can you start at the top and just go down? Highest paid players in the league? It, it, no. Defenseman. De- defenseman. Oh, okay. Uh, we'll see why. <laughs> so, Eric Carlson. Right-handed. Drew Doughty. Right-handed. Uh, Zach Wierenski. Ooh, left-handed. Left-handed. Adam Fox. Right-handed. right-handed. Charlie McAvoy. Right-handed. Seth Jones. Right-handed? Yes. And then we get to Darnell Nurse. Left-handed. left-handed. That's because left-handed people are the devil. <laughs> it's true. That's why you weren't allowed to, up until recently, weren't allowed to write with a left hand in school for some reason. Who are the highest Actually, two players? Do you not know that? I, yeah. They used to, they, <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure my dad is... Uh, How are we he still was, here? Yeah, yeah, no, and it, 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 it creates like major issues later on in life, like cycle, because your, your body just goes to one side but there was a time when that was considered if you were left-handed it was considered like uh that you were evil and they used to up until recently make kids like tie their hand behind their back and say you were learning with your right hand didn't isn't there a video i th- thought i saw a video this past week of Kyrie irving saying yes. he's left-handed but wasn't allowed to write that way he said yeah. that my girlfriend uh she went to an armenian uh school like uh, th- uh, as well as her regular school and like they were like armenian i don't know what uh, like religious people like this is the teachers i don't know it's not nuns but i don't know what the equivalent are is. they orthodox no it's, it's a different uh, type. It's, yeah. but she she's left-handed and they wouldn't let her use her left hand oh and, and this that, is like oh. and this is relevant because jesse's <laughs> girlfriend is 75 years old <laughs> right <laughs> Right? <laughs> no, this is fucking 20 years ago. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Six, you know? That's brutal. <laughs> uh, yep. Oh my God, man. Yep. It was yep. Eight or whatever yep. it was. I don't know. 25 yeah. years ago. As modern as you think we are, we're not. <laughs> it's funny, eh? Um, uh, so, last piece of trivia who is the highest paid player in the NHL to not have a no movement clause? Highest paid player in the NHL to not have a no movement clause? Mm-hmm. Hmm. To not have a no movement clause. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Leon? Oh, no, I had it for a minute. Leon? No? I don't Incorrect. think it's Leon. Put your heads together and deliver me one name. Because he's at eight and a half, right? Leon? Eight and a half? Try that? Uh, I don't even know if he'd be top 20 in highest paid players anymore, which is great. Dry Settle has a no trade and no movement. Wow. So, yeah. For him. This player Seth has. Jones. Uh, Seth Jones is incorrect. Damn. Seth Jones does have a no movement clause. So we got Rinsky, McAvoy. Oh, oh, I'm, I'm, it's a recent signing too. Do you? Highest Shit. paid player overall. Oh, player. Just defenseman. player. Doesn't have to be defenseman. Overall, highest paid player to not have a no movement or no trade clause. Ian and Taves both have them. They could be traded. They. I'll give you a hint. They make double digits. Oh. There's, that's very few players. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. I'm also. So I, yeah, I narrowed. I narrowed it down a lot for you guys. Let's name them all. Okay, uh, Matthews, no, Marner, no, Tavares. Jody, Matthews, Marner, Tavares. Petra- uh, uh, no. Why do I no? keep saying Petrangelo? No. Carlson. Mm-hmm. Uh, Deliver me a name. There's not a ton. Kane, Taves. Jesus. Oh. Does Price? is it Dowdy? No. What's your guess? Is it Dowdy? Because Dowdy did his own deal. Okay, your guess is Drew Dowdy. My guess is Carey Price. The correct answer is Austin Matthews. Really? Austin Matthews has no clauses on his contract. Yeah, I was, thought about Austin Because I bet he was like, yeah, try and trade me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead and trade me. There are two players who make, over, who make over $10 million who have zero trade protections. They are Austin Matthews and Mitch Marner. Can you <laughs> fucking imagine? Oh my God. They're the only $10 million players in the league that can be traded. I think his trade protection is he scored 60 goals. Yeah. yeah. And also, I think if you if you get the no trade, you accept less money. So he was probably like, no, just pay me the money. No, no, I, I'll take the money, please. <laughs> I trade me. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Whatever. Well, because everyone, every time I, I get annoyed when I try to trade someone like on the show. Who has a no move or a no trade? Because people go, he has a no move or a no trade. Since when does that matter? It doesn't. It's a please trade me to this specific place clause. Mm-hmm. That's all it is. That's all it's ever been. Mm-hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. It's so rare that a player just blocks everything. Yep. It's rare. I'm done with trivia. No. I want to futz around and be wrong for 15 minutes again. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Support for today's episode comes from 
You're not going to believe this. True classic. I love it. <laughs> True classic. Jesse's running to get something. True He's running classic. To- <laughs> you thought you could escape? Think again, because true classic. I'm not even here. kidding. Yeah, true, the true classic must have must have saw I our want show. The hat. And you give me the shirt. True <laughs> classic I here, baby. The shirt. Most t-shirts are it. way too tight in the wrong places or look way too big and boxy. So if you're spending countless hours at the gym trying to look good, why not spend five minutes to finally get a t-shirt that fits right? Too classic already has helped over two million men get into a better, give affordable me some more shirt. <laughs> At an affordable price. So oh, our listeners get access to the absolute best deal they can offer. For a limited time only, 25% off with the promo code Dangle at trueclassic.com. <laughs> isn't, that, isn't that crazy? I swear they must have heard us. They did. Oh, yeah. They must have heard us. So, yeah, they have signed up. They are one of our sponsors. And this is a true, real two crew classic t shirt. Don't throw it at the camera. Why? Don't do that. I don't know. Why? <laughs> that tripod's not strong enough to True hold it. Classic. <laughs> Where do we go to get classic. True Classic, Adam? TrueClassic.com True with the code. Com. <laughs> TrueClassic.com. With the code True Classic. No. Nope. No. Nope. What's the code? Toots Dangle. The code's Dangle. For how, what do we get? 25% off. Uh, it's pretty awesome. good. That's pretty good. It's better than pretty good. It's a true classic. <laughs> <laughs> Strengthen your core wardrobe with True Classic today. You know, it's a good thing now that we're starting to see celebrities and athletes take time off to take care of their mental health. Like this morning, uh, 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 Justin Bieber actually canceled the rest of his tour this morning. I didn't see that. Yeah, while we were recording. Um, uh, to It was like literally while we were doing the show um, because he needs a mental health break. Sean Mendez did it uh, about a month ago. Recently, yeah. And it's one of those things where it doesn't matter how much money you get paid. It doesn't matter how successful you are. Uh, we all need help. And I can tell you, everybody in this room has done therapy. And if you're looking to get into it um, and you are not comfortable with how traditional therapy set up or it's hard to find a doctor, BetterHelp kind of solves all of that. All you need to do is uh, go to betterhelp.com slash SDP. We're going to give you 10% off your first month. And the whole thing with BetterHelp is that you can do it over the phone. You can do it uh, on a voice, like a video call. You can do it on an audio call. You can do it over like text. You can write like in a chat function on your computer. The whole point is to give your brain the workout, kind of, right? And also the, the the checkup that it needs. And everybody does need it. Honestly, I'm a big proponent of that. Huge. Um, and I know Steve and Jesse are as well, obviously. So when you're, uh, when you're ready, we want you to check out betterhelp.com slash sdp that's betterhelp.com slash sdp get 10 percent off your first month um a couple more things uh jake oniger re-signed in dallas um and that's jesse's favorite goalie stutz was uh one of jesse's favorite centers Timmy Stutz. uh and then of course you got ottinger who is definitely jesse's favorite goalie you're cheating on Vili Uso. I, I know i know I which which that. deal do you like better Vili husos or jake ottinger's Oh my gosh, what was Huso's deal? Huso's deal, wasn't it $5 million a year? Uh, no, it was even less than no, that. Four and a half. The Leafs could have done it, right? Yeah, um, but hmm. I'll take Ottinger. <laughs> yeah. Ott- Not that it was an option, but I'll Ottinger's take Ottinger. has got a higher ceiling, so like I'll take the Ottinger uh, player. Like, the I'll Leafs, take him as the player on my team. The Leafs but. gave the Blues the pick that they used to pick Huso. Actually, no way. Yes, they did. Which contract? Or which it, was, it was the Roman Polak Carl Gunner. No. We, we did this on the show, didn't we? Oh, 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 oh yeah. my God. We did this on the show. Yeah, I, was, yeah. I must not have been here. Uh, no. Yeah. So he, Huso, four, seven, five for three years each mm-hmm. year. And then, of course, uh, the Stars just signed Ottinger four years, sorry, three years, four million per. Yeah. So they're no, all the same. I like that deal better because I think uh, Ottinger is kind of projected to be the better player. And like he has proven that in the playoffs. He was fucking unreal. He's, uh, it's such a fantastic deal for the Dallas Stars. He's poised to potentially, potentially be the highest paid goalie in the NHL at the end of his deal. Do you get. He's really good. He's got to hold it up for three years. The guy, yes. the guy that, that uh, everybody's talking about in Dallas is Jason Robertson. And I wondered, obviously, he d- is deserving of a big fat contract. But if you're the Dallas Stars and you've got so much money locked up in Sagan and Ben, and Ben's deal um, expires in three years, do you not say, okay, maybe in this one sense, a bridge deal makes a lot of sense? Because, yeah. because yes, we're going to pay a lot, but you're going to drop $9.5 million the summer that Ben's deal 
um, uh, comes off the books, right? Because of that. And then you're expecting the cap to jump about $10 million that year. I think all the leverage belongs to Jason Robertson, though. Yeah. He's so good. Like, I was, I was listening to 32 Thoughts. Jeff Merrick said, like, <laughs> there was a legitimate heart argument for Jason Robertson. He was that good. Mm-hmm. But no, we should give up on his brother really fast. <coughs> Um, like he was, he was really good. He's one of the best scoring wingers in the league. He does the hardest thing to do, which is score friggin' goals. Um, so I'm sure Dallas has approached him with, Hey, how about a bridge deal? And he potentially said, no, I don't want to because I'm Jason Robertson and I get whatever the hell I want because I'm ridiculously good. Um, I've seen some grumbling online. How does this affect the Leafs? That. If this were in Toronto, it'd be everything we hear about every single day. Of course it would. And it's in Dallas, so no one's talking about it. Of course. Uh, To that, I would say, who gives a shit? Yeah. Well, why are you grumbling about this? What playing in Toronto is? Yeah. Oh, man, the team's really popular. What was you? Like, I don't don't know. I I understand. And you're- Are people people mad about that? You're right for the wrong reasons. Uh, Okay. No, uh, a bridge deal does make some sense there. And you know what? Maybe there's maybe there's an argument that Robertson should take it again. Like you said, the cap is going to go way up. Mm-hmm. I can score. I can shoot the lights out for the next few years and then make like $12 million potentially. Um, that's a fascinating one. It's a, And it sounds like there's a little bit of penny pinching going I think, on from Dallas. Wh- why do you say that? I think the that? money is not there. Well, they got 6.3 like, million. So it's 6. Money's 3. not there and they don't want to pay it. Yeah, like... It, uh, Jason Robinson deserves more than 6.3. He's a 40 goal scorer who's going to put up 40 goals multiple times in his career. And they want to lock, lock him up for a long time. He doesn't, 6 million is not enough for that. So the, the Dallas Stars need to make some moves here to free up some room. You know, because- they could they could have made it eight had they not given Luke Glenn Denning $1.5 million. Did he? So like, unless good. that deal was the one he signed in Detroit. No, they signed him to a two year contract. What's last Cam Talbot, I guess. Sorry, I'm just being a dick. Um, um, but like, uh, I think Robertson deserves more than Stutzla deal. I think he deserves more than the Tage Thompson deal. Um, I think his ceiling's ooh. a lot higher. And the Dallas Stars currently don't have the cap space for that. I uh, that was another one from thirty two, where a lot of teams around the league were just looking at the Tage Thompson deal like you dick. <laughs> it screwed a lot of things up. Mm-hmm. Okay, let let me ask this. I'm Jason Robertson. I already, I know what play you're bringing up. Yeah. Like okay. you're okay. asking walk, me to walk, make, no, walk through your thing. No, I'm Jason Robertson. <laughs> you're asking me to take less than Matthew Kachuk. Why? Why? Don't what's, have it. What's Matthew Kachuk's deal? 9.5. Yeah, oh, but God. Okay. Yes, I am asking you that. <laughs> 9.5. No, but it, and he's got nothing this year and then full no move. No, oh. I'm asking you to take less than 9.5, but I'm asking you to take more than uh, 6.3. That's all the room they have. So Dallas has got to make a move here. That's not acceptable. 6. I'm wondering, I'm wondering if he becomes a free agent at the end of those three years, though, and that's when the cap jumps. That's his opportunity to make a just like an that's absolute why, boatload of cash. That's why I threw out 12. You, you're telling me he scores 40 for the next three years. He's not going to get that, you know, like, well, but that's what I'm saying is that like for him, he may not want to go that long term. Maybe it's Dallas. That's like, we want long term. And he's like, no, because why would, I mean, obviously I understand the NHL is a tough game. You can get injured. Things can happen. Of course. And that's why you want a long term contract like what Matt Kachuk got. But if you want to play the money game on this one and you're betting on yourself, and you're betting that you're going to do four, 35 to 40 for the next three years. That 2025 free agency class is going to be crazy. You could... Okay, so... Okay, Did they you, make the playoffs? Dallas? Dallas? No, right? Oh, I'm an idiot. They, they played yeah, yeah. the first round. Sorry, they barely Jay got the yeah, yeah, yeah. head. I'm an idiot, sorry. <laughs> no, because I was... I just remember heading into last season talking about how Dallas could really be a sleeper team mm-hmm. after going to the final in the bubble. And it just feels like I've, I don't think they're bad. I don't even think they're mediocre. I just think things really have not gone their way past couple of years. They've been really unlucky. You know, the Ben contract is not bad. The Sagan contract is not bad. They both had hip surgery. You know what I mean? But that's the reality now. Mm-hmm. Are they ever going to be back to pre-hip surgery quality in terms of their play? I don't think so. 
What are the Dallas Stars? And sorry, the reason I brought that up is I'm trying to talk myself into, could you potentially move one of those deals to a team like the Coyotes? Mm -hmm. I mean, the Coyotes are such a fascinating team in this league just for what they're trying to do, which is lose hockey games and acquire draft picks. Mm -hmm. Um, They need players who are under contract. Um, Is there a situation that makes sense for Dallas to tie a first round pick to the Jamie Banner, Tyler Sagan rocket ship and fire it out of town in order to get Jason Robertson. But Does that make sure. you better? Probably not. Oh, uh, maybe a little makes you more cap compliant. Mm-hmm. Um, gets you a little bit more room. Gets you a little bit more room. And isn't, then how do you it, fill that void? Before mm-hmm. the show off the air, you were saying Sagan was known for being like a gym rat kind of guy. Is that not the guy who's prime for, Tyler Sagan is one of the, he's one of the only athletes who's ever made me like look up, like Google, like human anatomy. (laughs) Because I saw this picture of him doing a pull up and I was like, his back has abs. Yeah. Strong guy. I've never seen those muscles. Health wise is going to come back to their form though. Is it not Tyler Sagan? I would believe it. I would believe it. I heard rumors that, uh, he was he's partially responsible for sort of guilting Nazem Kadri into his next gear. Um, like they were, uh, basically Naz was at a point in his career where he was stuck in his spot in the Leafs lineup. Mm -hmm. And this is, I'm pretty sure they hadn't, they, they were in, they were at the stage where they weren't making the playoffs. And Sagan was like, well, are you doing this? Are you doing this? Are you doing this? Are you doing this? Because Sagan was one of the best young players, best young centers in the league. And in short order after that uh, supposed little meeting between the two, uh, Kadri started kicking all the ass. Mm -hmm. So thanks, Tyler. Wow. I'd believe it of him, but then, then there's still the Jamie Benn conundrum. That's a guy who won the Art Ross. Good leader, hard hitter hips fucked like it's <laughs> it's dude it's hard to overcome I, w- I was saying to jesse uh before the show like what are the three worst injuries to have as a hockey player and it's got to be hip uh, what, concussion yeah, yeah um your wrist oh, wrist your, is bad wrist is bad but at least you can do some useful you can things. play through it yeah you can play through yeah. it you and you can shoot. be useful okay it's okay. it's the wrist is up there but i i uh concussions the back and the hips. Th- those are career enders. Mm-hmm. Those ones. Wrist. I mean, it takes a while to recover from, but players recover from it. Mm-hmm. Matthew's Holy shit, been dealing. Ilya McKay have scored like Rocket Richard. Matthew's last year. his wrist has been he, acting up for a season. He scored sixty goals, and he looks okay. Yeah. <laughs> and Claude Giroux had the wrist issues. He looks okay. Mm-hmm. No, the back is just for hockey. Like that's unbearable. The back is a bad one. The hips are a bad one. How about the ankle, Eric Carlson? Ooh, not just Carlson. ankle. Achilles tendon. Oh, oh, oh. That, uh, <laughs> Leon Dryside also says, "What's up?" High yeah. ankle sprain. Yeah. He played a whole playoffs with no ankle. <laughs> Managed to just gl- uh, glide around the ice and score a bunch of goals. It is four it, points a game. It, he <laughs> honestly sometimes he played like um, you know people that are just learning NHL and they don't know the speed boost button yeah. and they don't know the deke and they just kind of glide. Mm-hmm. And they glide it it the was fuck. magical to watch. He was one of the most effective players on the ice without being able to skate. That was I badly wanted that series to go seven, like because we we streamed it and God the Oilers were so fun to watch. And every time Drysaddle stepped on the ice, I'm like, I wonder how he's going to do it this time. <laughs> Still stationary? Wow. <laughs> oh, he scored. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this dude's putting up like three, four-point nights in the, in the Western Conference Final. Can't skate. It's fucked. It was, it was fascinating to watch. Yeah, it was a good playoff. Um, it was. Okay, Steve, you want to talk about... Uh, there's a couple more things here. Um, I want to let you know that the Coyotes, as of today, are releasing a limited limited inventory of single game tickets. Oh. Now, if you're if you're the Arizona Coyotes, you want people to think that these tickets are in demand, and I'm not saying that they're not. But they've released a PR statement saying we are just overwhelmed. This is crazy. They've actually gone as far as to claim, and Wyshynski's got an article up at ESPN.com that their ticket revenue are is up over last year. Uh, zero surprise. Okay. And then, so now they're going to release like limited 
amounts of tickets because you want to create a scarcity. You want to make it seem like you got to be at this. And I get it. They're not at ASU because things were going well <laughs> previously. <laughs> That's a solid yeah, point. They yeah. might be selling more seats. It, it, I believe it. <laughs> and, it that, and, and it should be a fun environment. Absolutely. I, how many times on the show have we said we got to go? And now we're going to have to pay again. I said it last show. I bet, of, of course, the majority of seats are going to be sold to Arizonans. Arizonians? Ariz I don't know. People from Arizona. I don't know. Um, Residents. But, but I, I know people from Arizona. Aries. Aries are just ripping off snowbirds left and right. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. yeah. People from Canada are going to be like, yeah, I'll pay 300 bucks to go to a college hockey game. <laughs> and I'm in Scottsdale for the week golfing anyway. I heard a story yeah. where, and, and the reason I say this, uh, I heard a story. Uh, my father in law went to uh, a Vegas Flames game and, of course, had to pay like freaking bananas money. I want to say it was like 300 bucks, something like that. The, his cab driver uh, is, was a season seat holder. Mm -hmm. Like one of the first ones, right? Because wasn't it, wasn't it the the inaugural season with Vegas? If you wanted to be a season seat holder, you had to buy in for three seasons. I don't know, something I don't like that. that. The but the driver said so, he has to he has to sell something like six games to pay for his whole year. So he just takes all right. Who's coming to town? Toronto, Calgary, Montreal, Montreal. Yeah. And you sell those games and you're good. It's paid for. You go and watch you go and watch the Vegas Golden Knights en route to the Stanley Cup final for free. For free. Because you're just ripping Canadians off who are probably on some bachelor party and they're like, yeah, let's go to the Golden Knights game and just ripping them off. You're gonna be able to do the exact same thing in Arizona. Well, do it. Do uh, it. So those limited seats are out. Uh, ticket revenues up. That's a good thing. And lastly, you wanted to quickly talk about Hockey Canada. Yeah. So uh, Canada's women defeated America's women. Hooray, hooray. Won the gold medals. First time, I think, it's been two in a row in like over a decade. Marie-Philippe Land, last minute, last second shot block. What a shock. What I? How, how, how did you know she'd be involved? It's so oh, crazy. Just always in the middle of it. Brian Jenner. Uh, heroic uh, performance. Um, and Scott Smith, the president of Hockey Canada, was handing out the medals. And there was some outrage about that. I saw Scott Wheeler tweeting about it, Frank Saravalli tweeting about it. Uh, lots of people upset about it. And I've been talking to people over the last few days. And listen, with the Hockey Canada scandal, there is some nuance. There's, it's still developing. We're still learning things. Um, many organizations and people at the head of organizations have asked for Scott Smith to step down as mm -hmm. the president of Hockey Canada, despite the fact that he basically just got there. There are arguments. Well, he didn't just get there. He just got the job. Sorry, he just got in there for that 20 role. something years. He's been there, I want to say, since like the Avalanche became an NHL team. And uh, just to put it in perspective, I yeah. came up with that on the spot and I was like, holy shit, he's been there a really long time. Um, there is some nuance here. Perhaps firing him is not the answer. Perhaps him resigning is not the answer. Okay. I'll, I'll allow that that's a possibility. I personally disagree with it. I think he should be gone, but I'll allow that it's a potential possibility. But let me just say, Anyone with a brain in their skull would have known that him handing out the medals to Canada's women's hockey, hockey team was a stupid, selfish decision. What are you doing? Use your head. And in that moment, it proved to me, beyond the shadow of a doubt, he is unfit to lead Hockey Canada and Hockey Canada is unfit to make intelligent decisions. I was going to ask you about that. Because he made that decision, because they made that decision, does that not say everything? Yeah. It does. It does. Even if you're 
absolved of everything. I, I don't even, we can't get into all the complexities of what's going on with Hockey Canada right now. But let's say Scott Smith was a Boy Scout and did nothing wrong. Scout's honor. All that. What a moron. <laughs> what an absolute idiot. Anyone with a brain in their head would know, hey, listen, I know you feel like you didn't do any wrong, uh, anything wrong. The optics of this are fucking awful. And yeah. you should maybe sit this one out. You couldn't find a legend of women's hockey. You couldn't find a local hockey hero. You couldn't find some kid. You couldn't find anybody other than Scott Smith to hand these out. Use your head. Use your head. Atrocious. Just atrocious. But anyway, congrats to the women's hockey team. Sorry that a guy fucked up your moment again. One of the things that underscored like that moment for me too was the letter that the team released beforehand where they said they wanted to play for Canada but not for Hockey Canada. And yes! They explicitly stated that and then you run out this man who's in charge of that to give them their medal. What a what a spit in the face of these women. So it was awful. That, that's important to note, Jesse. So Canada's women's team did what? They released a letter before uh, the World Championships were underway saying uh, how disappointed they were with Hockey Canada about the lawsuits that are going on and all, not, all that stuff and how they wanted to play for the country of Canada, but not for the logo Hockey Canada and that company. So it's not just a ignorant, selfish decision. The fact that that happened and that's the context of this happening how do you interpret it as anything other than an intentional fuck you to canada's women's hockey team? i think they, from the president of hockey i think canada. they feel like it's their way of being defiant like, the hockey we're canada's. not all bad oh what a oh, fucking God. hero yeah what a fucking hero yeah we're all rooting for you scott fuck off fuck off like i can't believe how selfish and how stupid this organization is the can you know canada doesn't win hockey games because of you right we win because we're extremely fucking good at hockey. It's been like our national identity for mm -hmm. a very it, long time. And if it wasn't you, Hockey Canada, it would be somebody else. Somebody else would take that back. Yeah. If, if Hockey Canada goes away, something else will take its place. But I, I just, I just, I can't, I can't get past it. I can't get past it. You couldn't have found anybody else. And they've ruined anybody else. They ruined such a great moment because like we should be talking about the fantastic game it was and what a tournament was for Canada to win. Yes. And like they drop to the Americans earlier in their tournament, then you win the gold medal game. And as Adam said, uh, they don't usually go back to back. Usually it's they take turns each time, but Canada got it done. And, and that's, not Canada related, but shout out Japan. Very, oh, very, yeah. Very big the victory for them. Yeah, very cool. Big and this is, I. so they did the, uh, the triple crown this year because they got the gold medal. And I think that's two world championships or I forget. No, the... Um, the women's under 20, under 19, 18. under 18, they won gold. And then the women's team wins gold at the Olympics. And then you get the gold, at the world championships. So triple crown for Canada. And then do you underscore it? You, you cap it all off by trotting out Scott Smith, the man, every, the man in charge of the organization that everybody despises. Good job. Like fantastic. Like I, I don't care if you're 100% absolved of any wrongdoing. Anyone with a brain in their skull would know that it would, it was the wrong decision to trot him out there. And whoever made that decision, whether it was him himself or, or someone else in leadership is a fucking idiot. Why? Why? Thanks for nothing. What else did you want to talk about? The press conference. The presser. SDP. The Steve Dangle press conference. In this edition of the press conference on the uh, Steve Dangle podcast, I'm going to ask a question. Uh, my question is going to be, why isn't anybody talking about hockey in the NHL changing their rules? Oh, yeah, you brought this up before so the show. I'm trying to look for I have no idea here. what you're talking about. So the NHL has decided to give the ability uh, for referees to uh, take back penalties. So previously, <laughs> as we've gone, no. uh, as, we, uh -oh. <laughs> as, as the rules have played out last season, the uh, NHL referees have the ability to review major penalties. So if there's a major penalty, they can go to the booth and they can check it. And then they have the ability to downgrade it to a minor penalty. They can't take it away, but they can downgrade it to a minor penalty. And this was a, this was, uh, Taylor Hall, I think it was, nailed Nathan McKinnon. He was given a major 
they discovered, oh, Nathan McKinnon, I think, hit himself in the face. <laughs> it never happened. But Taylor Hall got a penalty anyway because that's the rule. But they can only just make it a minor. So now this season, the referee has the ability to review a major penalty, any major penalty, and take it back. Not just downgrade it. They can just cancel the penalty uh, altogether. I'll read this piece from uh, Scouting the Refs. They wrote about it. Uh, rule 20.6. Really previously only allowed the officials to confirm the original major penalty call or downgrade it to a minor. They now have a third option to wipe it out completely. Here's the updated rule change in bold. The referee shall have the following options after video review, confirming his original major call, reducing uh, his original major call to a lesser penalty, or rescinding the original major penalty altogether. The old rule also required the officials downgrade the penalty to a lesser penalty of the same infraction. That is no longer the case. A major for boarding penalty could, after review, be downgraded to a minor for cross-checking. This does, change does not apply to match penalty reviews. I thought, I was like, how is this not news? We're giving the referees ultimate power here with video review. You can go look at any major penalty you call, and you can go make it whatever you want. And now we're, I think speculation based on the way we see NHL things go, we're going to see an uptick in major penalties because now if you call a major penalty, you have carte blanche to get it right. So we're going to see referees calling more major penalties so they can go to the review and they just get it right. Oh, uh, hooking major, five minute major. Okay, it's two. I, oh, that was actually tripping. Oh, uh, yeah. They can do that. <laughs> yeah, now. they can do that. They can do that. I can, already, I can already tell I'm alone on this in this room. I think this is good. I like it, but I think it's going to be an uptick in major penalties. I think you get it right, but who knows? Yeah, I, I like it. If it leads to an increase in getting it right, it's good, but yes. it's like but man, it, reviews. It's going to be more reviews, guys. <laughs> well, it's And we begged for that for a long time, and then we got it, and we realized this actually sucks ass. This is really shitty, mm -hmm. but all it takes is one fuck up. Uh, like, dude, the Taylor Hall, Nathan McKinnon thing exploited uh, um, a, a problem with the rule. He shouldn't have been penalized. He, he got a penalty for nothing. He got a penalty for nothing. And it's good that they were able to review it. It's silly that they were able to review it, see they were wrong, and not be able to fully correct the mistake. That's silly. So this is a good... I think rules, generally speaking, are good. <laughs> The in enforcement of the rules. Ah, well, there's often some problems there. Good rule. Fascinated to see how it goes. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I, I can't wait for the first time they do it. Yeah. Well, and like also, like what is ever called a major? Like right. roughing sometimes, like if it's a real big boarding. punch in the face. Boarding. Which is obvious usually. A, a cross check. A, a five minute major for cross checking is really rare. Like it's got to be in the face, mm -hmm. right? Um, and then, and then we're getting into like goofy stuff, like Darnell Nurse headbutting <laughs> Philip Deneau or like <laughs> very, very rarely, very rarely a slash. Yep. Like maybe half a dozen times a season. And you got to like, just, you got to bean a guy on the head, bean a guy on the head or like Sean Avery chopping down Dion Phaneuf. <laughs> yeah. And like, how many years ago was that? Long time. It's, they're very rare. I, I don't think this is going to be a big issue. I like we'll the see. fact that, as you said, they now give the ability as the ref to get it right. You know, getting it right should be the end goal here. And adding this piece to the rule allows more uh, getting getting it right. You know, you can now get the correct call more often. I just, uh, how many reviews are we doing? Yeah. You know? uh, we'll see. My, oh, we should do, <laughs> we should do an over under. I'm going to go with 25. <laughs> The one, the one positive here, and we do have to wrap the show here soon. Best. Yes. <laughs> the one positive here is it's going to force the refs to actually admit they were wrong ones. In a public setting. Which they never have to do. I, I can't remember if you clarified this. Mm. Does this allow the ref to... No, I guess it wouldn't. It's just downgrading the penalty. It's just downgrading. They can't upgrade it. Like they can't, uh, well, because then they would have to review everything. No, because you could only review a major penalty, so you can't go higher. So what you're saying <laughs> is they're going to call more majors to... Uh, so you can downgrade it or eliminate it. 
Interesting. I think refs are willing to admit they were wrong mm -hmm. and then be mad about it after. Mm -hmm. um, hmm. Fascinating. You I know what? I like it. It's an interesting thing that we should just keep an eye on as the season goes along and we see it actually happen for the first time. I'm excited. It'll be a, it'll be a narrative, you know? Yeah. It's interesting. I mean... Listen, I, I see how there could be a problem with it, but the Taylor Hall McKinnon thing can't happen again. That's so silly. Like, imagine that decides a game, it decides a playoff spot. It no, can't happen. It'd be crazy if uh, somebody got called for a pick in the middle of the playoffs, you know, and <laughs> somebody that scored, should have been a major. <laughs> somebody scored a goal on a on a pick that happens a lot in hockey, and then it's like, oh no, it's not a goal, and then the team loses in the first round. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> Imagine calling the, the 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 book and then not calling the book, and then uh, you know what? It's game seven. Better call the book. Let Let's review it. Uh, is this a penalty? Yes. Is it ever called? God no. Uh, let's have, oh, fuck. I, it's, what, <laughs> what, day, what day is That's it? That's a great way to end it. God, we need new games. I need new games right now. You know, when we used to refer to that time during game seven, we used to talk about one game seven. Now it's like, which of the five game sevens are you referring to? I like that they always lose in the most heartbreaking way. <laughs> Hockey's uh, coming back, baby! The Steve Dangle Podcast. Powered by Sports Interaction. Canada's Sportsbook. Follow the guys on Twitter at Steve underscore Dangle, at Adam W-Y-L-D-E, and at Jesse Blake. Connection complete.